everyone. Welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan. We are in um, the lovely select board chambers at Town Hall. I say lovely not only because it's a nice atmosphere, but it's air conditioned. Um, and we're very much appreciating that today, as we are appreciating also the presence of our guest today. He is Sandy Pooler, our town manager. And um, first of all, thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate it. James, always a pleasure to talk with you. And I have gotten to talk with you over the years and, you know, as part of your, your previous position, the work you did in your previous position, deputy town manager. We'll talk a little bit about that today. But I basically, this is a somewhat unusual talk of the town in that, you know, oftentimes we are uh, interviewing folks who are coming into town for the first time into a new position, uh, et cetera. Not the case for you. Obviously, that happened a little while ago, and I think we may have even done an interview at that point. Um, but uh, I want to talk to you today about the fact that you've assumed the town manager role. Um, but let's start, uh, if you don't mind, by just kind of doing the same thing we would do if you were brand new to the town and ask you about your journey to this point. Um, specifically, professionally, what have you been up to um, and where? And just give us a little, a little intro of, of that sort. Sure. So um, I've been doing municipal finance for a long time. Uh, I think the irony of that maybe, or, uh, or maybe it's just something about the skills one needs. I came out of college with a, a degree in history, <laughs> not finance or anything like that. I did public interest work at MassPerg for uh, five years. Uh, and then I decided to go to law school when I came out of law school, I was really balancing between the corporate world and the uh, public sector. Uh, went back and forth, finally decided I would work in the public sector. And so then I started working in the Massachusetts legislature. Uh, that was a very exciting, interesting experience. Uh, I was committee counsel for a series of different committees. Uh, did a lot of interesting work there around some big issues. Um, then at one point, I also decided that the legal side was interesting, but really, if you controlled the budget, that's where decisions were really made. <laughs> so um, coinciding with my boss at the, in the legislature deciding he was going to run for mayor of the city of Newton, I went to the Kennedy School and did their mid-career program, got my master's in public administration, took every budget class I could possibly get my hands on, and then uh, worked for the city of Newton for eight more years as the budget director there, or chief budget officer was the title. And then um, for the last four years I was there, I worked as uh, the chief administrative officer, which might be sort of the equivalent of a, the COO in a, uh, in a private company. Uh, then my boss decided to change again and retire a new mayor came in, brought in his own staff. Right, out with the old. Didn't exactly. Um, I eventually ended up in the town of Amherst, uh, which is a beautiful community out in Western Mass, as many of your viewers probably know. Uh, started there as the finance director, had a very good experience in that town. Um, then unfortunately, the town manager there all of a sudden died. Um, young guy, 52 years old, just passed away one day. Um, so that was sad. He was a friend of mine as well as my boss. Uh, at that point, Adam Chapterlane, the manager here, had uh, heard that, uh, basically asked if I was available to come to work for Arlington. And the long and the short of it is that's how I ended up here. Mm -hmm. Well, that is, I appreciate you sharing, especially going back that far, because I didn't realize, among other things, you and I have a n number of parallels <laughs> right. uh, in our background, you know, including a law degree that we didn't use. Yeah. And, you know, I also graduated in history and oh. uh, I, I also worked briefly for the Pergs out in California. Um, oh. But I have to say the fact that, and uh, this is a, totally an aside, but the fact that you were at Mass Perg for five years is Astonishing. Anybody who has been involved <laughs> yeah. in PERG work, that's public interest research group yeah. work in any of the states that they operate, know that boy, did they burn through young people's energy fast <laughs> in those places. It, Understandably so, but tough work. It's a lot of work. That's right. But um, 
I have to say, coming out of there, every job I've had since has been easier. <laughs> I am not, uh, it, it, people think we're exaggerating. We are not. No, it, it does teach uh, you how to work hard. Yeah, absolutely. And, and a lot of that is thrust into the, you know, is thrust upon uh, people in their early 20s, um, early to mid 20s who are taking on roles and again, needing to just kind of master new skills at a very, very rapid rate and then supervise incoming peers of, you know, a year, two years younger than they are, et cetera. Really quite the cauldron uh, in a lot of ways. Um, so it doesn't surprise me to hear you say that. And that with uh, obviously a pretty impressive resume of quite uh, heavy responsibility in, 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 in all of those jobs. Um, so um, I want to then uh, actually uh, you, you brought us up to the point where you came to Arlington for the first time as tep deputy town manager. As you said, your predecessor, Adam Chapdelaine, reached out to see if you were available. Therefore, clearly your reputation preceded you. Um, was that your, did you know anything about Arlington at that time? If not, tell us a little bit, if, as you rem recall, what it was like to come into this community, what your impressions were of the community, et cetera. So, I had lived in Arlington the year after I graduated from college, so that was 1979. I'd lived here for three or four months down on Palmer Street, right off of Mass Ave. Arlington was a very different town then. It was a dry town back then. Um, I remember there was a fountain in the middle of town center, sort of near the firehouse. And from time to time, high school students would fill it with uh, with detergent and it would bubble up. <laughs> so that was the Arlington that I remembered. Um, it, my understanding of the town since then, it has a reputation for being a very well-run town. Uh, it is, I think, a financial leader across the state for how it manages its money. Um, it has changed as a community a lot with the development of restaurants and diversity and you know, everything from the commercial base to the, uh, the types of people who live here. Um, and, uh, and the school system has really grown and, you know, become one of the strongest in the state. So, uh, so both just the community atmosphere uh, was appealing and the professional atmosphere here in Town Hall. I knew I was gonna come in to, and work with colleagues I liked. Uh, and in particular, you know, starting with Adam, uh, I had known him before, and you know, had a lot of respect for him. Um, and just very quickly meeting the other staff here, it was apparent that uh, it was a high quality group of people. So it was easy to to come in. So good, an easy choice at that point yeah. for you. Great. Um, and then, so just remind people briefly, uh, in your role as deputy town manager, what were your primary responsibilities? Well, um, there was a transformation over time. Uh, in this job, and I think in most, most jobs I've had, my responsibilities have sort of grown as I have poked my way into doing more and more things. Uh, my partner says I'm a Budinsky. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I'm sure in, in, they mean it in the nicest way, right? No, I, I, <laughs> I'm not sure she always means it in the nicest way, but um, she's mon known me for a long time, so I would say yes. Um, so I started, you know, in charge of the budget and doing sort of that aspect of it. And I think very quickly I inserted myself to trying to bring together all the different financial departments. So I would hold weekly uh, finance team meetings with the treasurer, comptroller, assessor, school business agent, and um, just get us all in the same room. Sometimes we bring in the IT department and just make sure we were talking with each other. At that time, um, the treasurer was a separately elected official. The comptroller worked not for the manager, but for the select board. And of course, uh, the school business agent worked for um, school committee. And, but I just, in my experience, thought it was very important that everybody be in the same room and sharing their experiences, working on problems together. I think it was a very productive set of meetings. It eventually led us to a more formal structure uh, where one of the uh, town meeting members suggested that we have a finance director position in town. It was Dean Carmen who put that forward. 
Um, I think he came to that conclusion as he was the town treasurer, mm -hmm. uh, put that through town meeting. So then I became the finance director in a, a formal sense after having done it informally. Um, so I've been doing that ever since. Um, and I, I think it's been great for the town. Um, we also helped transform the treasurer from an elected to an appointed position, transform the comptroller for, to be a, accountable to the town manager directly. Um, and I, I just think it's, uh, it's made for smoother, better operations. Um, I have since then taken my uh, management analyst, uh, Julie Wayman, transformed her uh, from helping with the budget to really putting the budget together. Uh, she did the, that in this last year. I asked her to start doing that partly because I knew there was a chance that there'd be a transformation um, and partly because I just thought she was ready for it. So you know, threw her into the budget and told her to swim and she did a great job. So I think um, that's been a big part of my experience here. I've also been very involved in collective bargaining uh, along with Karen Malloy, our uh, human resources director. Um, I think that's been very successful. We've had a very open uh, process with our unions. We've put together a lot of data on the town's financial condition. We've put a lot of data together for them on how different salary proposals will affect their members and allowed them to see spreadsheets with member by member showing what different colas or different step patterns or other things have been. And it's really been a positive uh, relationship uh, with, I'd say, most of the unions. It's, it's really gone from a world where I first started doing collective bargaining years ago, where you sort of hid all the money, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to one saying, hey, the books are open, it's a public process, let's just talk about how we get to a contract. Um, and I will credit Karen a lot with that for her understanding of how important it is to have good relations with our unions. Um, and by having those, we are just able to get through a lot of problems seamlessly, or at least with minor bumps in the road. Um, so I'd say those are two of our, our biggest, uh, or my biggest um, kind of institutional changes. And I guess the one other thing I would mention is the whole process of building the high school and being on the high school building committee. Um, it's been great to see it go from an idea to, to steal to actually having the first wing built up there. Uh, I'm still on the building committee. I still uh, attend those meetings once a month. Uh, and uh, it's been an exciting process. Um, that uh, is a, you know, it's a great kind of you know, uh, description of the things that you've been up to um, uh, over over your years here so far. And what I was really struck by is the fact that, you know, you have a low profile until recently, you've had a low profile in town. People might not, might be, recognize you, might recognize your name, might not. And yet you have been kind of absolutely uh, intrinsically involved in, in changes that are, you know, that, that are meant to, and I'm sure indeed benefit um, the community as a whole, working behind the scenes. So interesting, really, that you are emerging into the light at this moment. But again, as somebody who has been working hard on behalf of the community, um, more in you know more in the shadows, or not the shadows, but you know more more under the radar, I guess. Well, I've always I've always liked being a number two. I think. Uh, you know, at the Kennedy School, they teach you how to be a leader and so forth. Uh, I think they need to emphasize a little bit more that actually being the number two in an organization is an important role. It, there's an ability to get a lot done, uh, to counsel the number one, to sometimes hold the number one's hand, uh, but uh, to bring about some substantive change uh, and do it behind the scenes in a way that doesn't, you know, I, I've always tried to keep my name out of the press, except with you. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't, ha haven't seen that over time as my role. It's been my role to bring about institutional change and improvement, and I've really enjoyed doing that. Yeah, and I, I really like the analogy you made earlier about 
um, you know, the work that you did in Newton being similar to a COO because, again, the, the CEO, and, or in our case, town manager, right, that's the person out there in front doing the communicating. Adam often mentioned that he wasn't doing the work itself. He was basically communicating about it. Uh, and obviously, he was very good at that, and as, as I'm sure you are and will be as well. Um, but uh, you've just made a really kind of compelling case for why actually being in the number two position, so to speak, being to the side you know, of the throne or whatever, um, does allow you to actually have the ability to make change. Yes, I think um, it does. And to be involved in the work itself in that way. And that's, that is satisfying in an entirely different way, right? Exactly. So um, let's, let's jump to the present. And I'm thinking that um, you were saying earlier that the decision to come to Arlington as deputy town manager at Adam's invitation uh, was an easy one. How is this one? <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. I, uh, I've seen myself to date as essentially trying to oil a machine that runs pretty well. We have very talented department heads. We have a lot of very talented, dedicated staff. Uh, I try to let them do their jobs and not interfere with that. Uh, and I think in general, they... So what about that Budinsky part, though? <laughs> well, you know, there's always <laughs> some internal tensions. Uh, Sorry to interrupt. No, that's, that's all right. Uh, so I do try to talk with the department heads. One of the things I've done since becoming manager is go around and meet personally with each department head in his or her office um, and just ask them, all right, I've known you for the last six years through the budget process and so forth. And um, there are things, though, that you've probably told the town manager that I now need to know. So let's talk about that. And let's talk about where you see your department going in the next year. Um, and so that's been an important conversation or set of conversations I've had with all the department heads now. Um, and again, I think generally they are good at sort of running things and on a day-to-day -day basis, I think I have played some positive roles in talking through particular issues that have come up. Um, whether uh, it's just dealing with select board, which sometimes they have questions about, or dealing with constituents, or dealing with the press, um, or, uh, or dealing with the unions, all of which are things that I think the department heads, they just need a wall to, to bounce ideas off of. Um, and then I try to you know, ask questions about how things are going and, and get a, a real sense. Um, so I do know what's happening, and I can talk to you, or I can talk to the select board, I can talk to constituents about it. Um, there are a number of you know, big projects that we've got going on. I was just at a, uh, an event today for the topping off ceremony at the new DPW building. So they put the last piece of steel up, they bolted it in place, they raised it up with a tree and a flagpole on it. Uh, we all got to sign it. Um, and it's, again, the kind of project that I've had a lot of involvement on the finance side, uh, and now just dealing with DPW as to how they've managed their staff during the interim, where they've put staff, how we've given them the resources to get their work done while they're out of the building, mm -hmm. um, and just keeping an eye on that without, I think, interfering with how they actually get their work done. An enormous new building that is going to be. Oh, yeah. Uh, clearly. And great that there was a milestone just today, top, topically, as we're, as we're meeting here um, for, again, you, you, these are the kinds of things that, as deputy town manager, you probably, or, or finance, finance director, you probably had a choice whether you want to go or not, in a <laughs> sense. Uh, no, no such thing anymore, right? Oh, well, right. Um, yeah, no, I, I think, uh, yeah, there are a number of things like that, I think, you know, the high school too. I mean, Arlington has got two huge projects going forward uh, in this next year. It's, again, my intention to just help things move forward. If there are problems, help deal with them, you know, and with both those projects, there have been any number of challenges along the way. 
thankfully now, I think we're at the stage where they're both sort of running along and should sort of glide into completion. So <laughs> keep glide, my fingers. huh? Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I try to be optimistic. Exactly. Well, we all like the sound of that verb, that's for yeah. sure. <laughs> let, yeah. let us hope that that is in fact the case. Um, I, uh, I, I was wondering though, you just mentioned over the next year and uh, my understanding, and let me make sure I've got this right, is that your contract with the select board, with the town is for a, a year. Correct. Um, which is not as long as is usually the case, I think. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Is that, is that because this was, again, not something you had anticipated necessarily, the, the ascension to, to the town manager position and you had other plans? Well, I'll let you speak to it. Sure. So I had always thought that next summer would be when I would retire. Uh, I mean, both because I will sort of max out on my retirement, um, just the numbers when you're in a public system, you get to a certain point. Um, I uh, will be 66, almost 67 by then. And uh, frankly, there are other things I'd like to do. I'd like to <laughs> Maybe relax a little bit more. I've been working hard for a long time. Yeah, uh, travel and and with my partner and so forth. So um, I'd always thought that I would uh, retire then, and um, I also think in this coming year, it is in the town's interest, and I think the select board agreed to have some stability in the next year, both because. Uh, we're likely to have an override, or there's certainly going to be discussions about an override in this coming year, probably next spring, although all that needs to be decided. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I think instead of bringing somebody in right before that happens or in the midst of that happening, it would be in the town's interest to have that continuity. Um, and uh, so I, the select board agreed with that. Uh, and will go through that process. It will allow them to start the search process for a new town manager this winter um, to bring somebody in probably the beginning of next fiscal year or thereabouts, um, but not have to be the person who's leading the override discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I feel comfortable doing this. I, I think the town is on, a, is in good shape. Uh, I think the departments are, are being well run. Uh, if we have to deal with uh, the override, I think I can make the case for the impacts of that override and so forth. If it turns out that the override isn't successful, I've been through situations where we've had to have cutbacks. When I was in Newton, it, several years in a row, I'd have to ask departments for, to propose 5% budget cuts mm. because back in, the, back in those days, in the early 2000s, health insurance costs were going up so mm -hmm. much that we just didn't have the money to do other things. Um, so I think I've been on both, both sides of that coin and um, that I hope I can offer something to the town during this next year. Uh, as we go into that big decision. Yeah, I think um, both your experience and your demeanor, frankly, and, and your expertise, all, all of those things are a real boon for the town at this moment, um, for sure, because you are, you know, you just have been through overrides from a lot of different perspectives before. I also know from my uh, series of conversations with you over the years about the budget that in Arlington, you can see things coming. You can see things coming because there's a real good long-range planning process that you're, you know, a, a very big part of, um, and, you know, and then the town is quite good at communicating, you know, getting people ready and prepared for the fact that this is coming. This is not going to be a, a surprise. So, yeah. um, you know, but it will re require kind of steady um, and steady stewardship and and good communication, no doubt about it, because. Um, you know, it is, it's nobody's favorite thing. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I think we have balancing what, uh, against each other, both the desire not to raise taxes, or at least too much, and a set of very high expectations that the public has for the level of services in this town. And it's 
keeping those two things in balance that will be the challenge in the seems, coming year. Seems like it. And, you know, I've, I, I can go back about eight years now myself in terms of talking to different um, stakeholders and decision makers around these things. And yeah, that balance is, woof, yep. that, that is a tough needle to thread. So glad it's your job and not mine. I'll say that much. Um, so Sandy, let me ask you as a last thing. Um, I know that your, 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 your term is quite defined and you're anticipating your well-deserved retirement on the other side of that, et cetera. But do you have um, ambitions, goals, targets f for, that you'd like to see accomplished beyond what you've mentioned already um, here, kind of providing that stewardship over this next little while? So in addition to think, you know, the override and these building projects, there are uh, energy and environmental issues that, uh, you know, Adam did a great job of, of setting us forth on. So we have, for example, this fall, there's an Electrify Arlington plan where we are hiring some uh, advisors for residents who are thinking of making their homes all electric. And uh, I'm going through that myself. I'm doing that my own home. I, I live in Somerville. I've to sign a contract with somebody to put in mini splits and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Uh, but it is, it's a daunting process. And I think providing that sort of help to people, we have a good record in town of helping people putting solar on their house, on their homes. And that was a very successful program. So uh, this Electrify Arlington uh, will be a, a great program. Um, and, uh, you know, we do have a, a net zero uh, action plan, net zero by 2050. Uh, this will be an important part of that. And in any number of other environmental ways, we want to, to continue to make Arlington green. The other thing, again, I would give a lot of credit to, uh, to Adam for starting this off, is our uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion plan. We have a great DEI director, Angela Harvey, uh, and her staff. She's been doing a lot of great work. We have some consultants who are coming in uh, doing an equity audit in the town. Uh, there's a lot of work that is planned uh, for this fall and the, and the next year with more training for our staff uh, and more discussions in the community about this issue. You know, it is one of the big issues of the day. Uh, you know, you're all, when you have these discussions, you're always learning something about yourself. You're learning something about people around you. These are important discussions to have, both from the learning perspective and from the action perspective, uh, to help make this a more inclusive and welcoming community. Uh, so uh, I'm very much behind that and very much looking forward to continuing doing that kind of work. So uh, that and making sure the garbage is picked up and the <laughs> street, the snow is picked up and the fire, you know, 911 works. All those things are things we'll continue. I'll, Look forward to continue to work on. Absolutely. The, CE, the COO in you <laughs> yeah. is going to make sure that those things, that the trains keep running on time, so to speak. So That's right. uh, good enough. Well, I know that um, you know, I get to speak to you regularly because we do the town hall update together, and we will continue to do that. Uh, so, I, But I want to say I particularly appreciated just being able to sit down, dig a little bit deeper, especially into who you are and what, you're, what you've done in your life, which is very interesting. Um, but uh, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. James, it was a pleasure. I enjoyed talking with you. Very, very, very nice. I have been speaking uh, to Sandy Pooler, who is our town manager. And uh, boy, he's got quite the resume and also um, some, hopefully, some, some clear uh, or some enticing retirement plans a little ways ahead of him. Well, some work to do between now and then. So we wish you very good luck with that. Thank you. We will be here to monitor the progress and to celebrate, let's hope, new buildings, new accomplishments, etc. This has been Talk of the Town. I have been speaking, as I said, to Sandy Pooler, our town manager. I am James Milan. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.